Test. Test.
Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a setter. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I draw up, dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up 
and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> Hearing that we are awake and we are church and we are gathered here on Sunday for our weekly renewal of God's word and our spirit of being with one another. So, St. Paul the church in Corinth. Uh, as you have heard so many times from this pulpit explaining what's happening in the church of Corinth, St. Paul writes to them trying to guide them back on the way, being a church that they, that one of the churches that he founded and the folks who took in charge to help lead the faithful, well, they became a little fractious amongst each other and being lost in the light and so on. And I'm always appreciative, as one who was never appreciative of Paul for many years, especially during seminary, that he wanted to remind them to be concerned with that which is godly and be back on the path of the godly, and not with human needs and wants, the things that distract us from being closer to God. Thus, as we heard in the opening verse, we are always competent even though we know that, a while, that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not determined by that which only we seem to know, not with faith. So, a little story to share before the scent of the barbecue overwhelms us. <laughs> So this is the story of the rabbi's gift. It was, it, is, it was written originally by Father Francis Dorff of the Prematorians, and I wish to share it with you. We begin. The abbot of the order walked through the woods. He was wrestling with his thoughts. His order had fallen upon hard times. The monks were older. The buildings were more difficult to maintain. Worst of all, the monks themselves seemed a little bit more fractious, and the order seemed irrelevant in times such as these. And as he walked and prayed, taking in God's beauty, but also wrestling with his thoughts and all this noise in his head, he ran into his friend, who was the rabbi in the town, and they greeted each other warmly and continued the conversation. And the abbot shared his worries. And the rabbi responded, I understand. You know, it's been challenging also. There are fewer members of the congregation. I see fewer people in this synagogue. The spirit has left this town. And I wonder how long the work that we do will, become, will remain re relevant to the people we serve. And as the friends continue their walk in conversation, in prayer, and in commiseration with one another, as a parting question, the abbot asked the rabbi, what advice do you have for me, old friend? 
And the rabbi responded, I have none. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have anything more to share. The only thing I can think of is perhaps there is the Messiah amongst you. When the abbot returned to the monastery and shared this with his fellow monks, and they said, the rabbi said there may be a Messiah amongst us. Yes, the, rabbi, the abbot responded, he wasn't of much help. It was wonderful to be with him. It's great to be with my friends and to be in conversation with them, with him. But it's such a cryptic message, I don't know what this means. In the days and weeks that followed, the monks pondered the words and wondered what that meant. The Messiah is amongst us. Who is he talking about? Is it the abbot? The abbot's been here for many years. He is our father abbot. He is our great leader and has guided us for a generation or more. Or is it our brother Thomas is a very holy man and everyone knows that Thomas has the light within him. Or maybe it's Ethelred. Ethelred is, well, kind of crotchety and gets on people's nerves. But also, Ethelred shows up when we need him. The same with Philip. The same with Edward. Edward, who's marvelous and just somehow appears at your side whenever you need a little boosting. Maybe it's Philip <coughs> or Edward. But it couldn't be me. It's not me because I'm just an ordinary person. There's nothing that I'm doing that's very special. And that wouldn't be the sign of someone who's special, would it, if you're ordinary? What are the things that are important that Jesus shared with us? Grace and love and prayer and support. As the monks continued to be in this conversation, something changed within them, though. They started treating each other with grace and respect on the off chance that maybe one of the people they were speaking with might be like the Messiah. And they continued in this manner of instead of being cranky and crotchety with one another, instead of being questioning with one another, they instead began to give each other space and grace and being loving conversation. And their prayers began to have more meaning and this started to get out into the wider world. The people who came with the deliveries to buy the honey and jams that they sold, to bring the supplies up to the monastery, they started noticing that the monks were nicer to them. They were a little bit more graceful. And that brought a certain light to the space. And they told their friends, hey, have you been to the monastery? They're not cranky up there anymore. <laughs> They're kind of nice to us. They're not wondering why we're not here. They just say, thank you and God bless you. And that word got out and people started to visit them. Not unlike the way that the faithful used to visit the hermits in the desert who left the cities in the early church to get away from people and yet the holy ones, people follow them into the desert to get a sense of that holiness. So the people in the town started to visit the, mo the monks in the monastery to get a little bit of that sense of God's love and grace and respect and space for one another to help them tie them through the days. And this continued on and on and more people gathered to not only for retreat but to stay with the monks to learn about how did they become this way. And instead of being a forgotten order of people who are no longer relevant, the monks began to be a place of spiritual renewal. And thanks to this gift from the brother rabbi, who is the friend of the abbot, there is a sense of renewal in God's love in that space. And here endeth the lesson from Father Francis. 
And I think maybe that was the message that we were missing in the Church of Corinth, that they became so enmeshed in the issues of who comes on first, the issues that we worry about ourselves, of how we relate to one another, that what our needs come first, instead of being in that space, in the ways of God's love and respect and grace. The way that Jesus showed us as he who was and is and never shall be. In our story, our brother monks had, were blessed to have a friend to remind them of this godliness and their humanity, to be guided more by being connected with God than by our thoughts, by our faults. And in our thoughts, to be reminded deep inside of us that it is our spiritual life that connects all of us and which every Sunday we gather to get our spiritual tune-up with each other in scripture and hearing and prayer to get that tune-up to know that what we do is we walk in our faith and not by our, only by our sight. Father Pierre Teilhard de Chardin wrote, You are not a human being in search of spiritual experience. You are spiritual beings immersed in a human experience. May we continue to be in search. May we continue to be, rather, immersed in our spiritual and human lives. I wish you a very blessed and warm Sunday. Amen. Standing, let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We live for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Holy One of Constant Hope, we ask that your church and all those who serve in it may be stirred by the winds of your Holy Spirit to do your work on earth. Your mercy is great. We pray for all those in leadership in the United States and around the world, that they may hold fast to the principles of love, justice, and mercy. Your mercy is great. We praise you for the gift of creation and the way it nurtures us in body and spirit. We pray that we may be committed to its protection and repair the wrongs that have been done to it. Your mercy is great. 
We lift up before you all those who suffer, the destitute, the vulnerable, and all imperiled. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers, especially Giancarlo, Robert, Nancy, Don, Heidi, Rick, Divine Anthony and family, George, Margaret, Jefferson, Pamela, Don, Francis, Michael, Leslie, Scott, and those you would name, aloud or in your hearts. May they feel seen, known, and loved. Your mercy is great. We remember all those who have died and entered a new realm of being, especially Phyllis, Everett, Anne, Luis, Rich, Marty, and those you would name aloud or in your heart. May they be welcomed into your eternal embrace forevermore. Your mercy is great. We know that all good things come from you. We ask that your presence, blessing, and protection be made known to those we especially love and to those we don't love. May these gifts that enrich our earthly life bring us closer to you. Your mercy is great. Holy One, all this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, who calls us to look upon the world with your compassion. Accept our prayers and praises, and hold us and all who turn to you in the strong embrace of your love. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of Christ be always with you. Please greet one another with a sign of God's peace. for just a few short announcements. Uh, if you're worshiping with us for the first time or visiting, a special welcome to you. I hope you'll join us uh, after the service, both for our cookout and just for coffee and fellowship with one another. Uh, and it is just good for us to be together on this morning. And happy Father's Day to those of you who are celebrating Father's Day. Uh, as, as I mentioned, I hope you'll join us after the uh, service for our cookout for burgers and hot dogs and veggie options and all sorts of time to be together. You know, as we combine our services, our 9 and 11 o'clock services, I often hear grumbling from people. Oh, my, my, my routine is shifted and da, 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 da. But it's also such a great opportunity to see, you probably see people around you that you don't normally see on a Sunday morning. 
reach out to one of those people, introduce yourselves. Also, if you've gotten out of the habit of wearing your name tag, it would be a great thing to get in the habit of doing again, just so we can, we are all one community as St. Mary's. Uh, so it's a great opportunity to, to feel that a little bit more than when we're kind of separated into many of our different services. So grab a burger, talk to somebody you don't know after the service, uh, and have a great time. After that, the young professionals will be up in the library helping to arrange and, and clean it up a little bit. So if you're, well, if you're wanting to join them for that, uh, go ahead and head upstairs after you're done uh, eating and having conversation with one another. Uh, our uh, summer choir kicked off today, so you have the rest of the summer to join at 9 and uh, just for a brief rehearsal. And so you know robes, very casual, but they still sound great. So you can be a part of that. <laughs> Next Sunday is our Pride Sunday celebration, so I hope you will join us for that. And then on the 30th, we'll have our mid-year celebration of ministry and mid-year report. So stick around after the 10 a.m. service for that. And if you are a ministry leader and haven't gotten to your, your report to me yet, I will be looking for those, especially this week. Uh, Saturday, July 13th, St. Mary's goes back to the ballpark for a Giants game at 4.15. Uh, sign up tickets are 30 bucks, and I hope you will be with us for that because the last time we were there, they won. So I think we're good luck. Uh, and most, uh, one of the big things that we are doing today is our mission trip heads off tomorrow to Eureka. So if you are going on that mission trip and would come forward... <laughs> Our youth and youth leaders are heading up to Eureka, uh, you know, a little more local than Kenya last year, but no, no less need at all. So uh, we will, there is information in the bulletin. You can, I followed along religiously with their blogs last year. So highly recommend, and of course, keep them in your prayers for safe travels and for uh, fruitful ministry. And uh, if you would join me in blessing them, God be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son came not to be ministered to, but to minister, we pray for your blessing on our St. Mary's youth and leaders as they head on their mission trip. As your servants follow in Jesus' footsteps, loving and serving their neighbors, fill them with wisdom, patience, perseverance, humility, and courage. Enable them to share their gifts generously with those whom they meet. Give them attentive minds and compassionate hearts to see the face of Christ in all those whom they may encounter. Give your servants daily encouragement and a ready will. Inspire them with your love that they all may worthily minister in your name in a spirit of reconciliation with God and with each and every neighbor. Keep your servants safe from injury and bring them home renewed and rejoicing. All this we ask through the one who laid down his life for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Go with God. <laughs> Now, as we turn our attention to this table, a reminder that it is not my table or the table of St. Mary's or the table of the Episcopal Church, but it is Christ's table, and he sets it for all who hunger and thirst for him. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
God be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made. We acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time gather us with blessed Mary, the Christ-bearer, and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior, Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
This is the true bread which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Whoever eats this bread The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
please stand as you're able for our post-communion prayer. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Creator God, we give thanks for the fathers in our lives. Give them strength and wisdom, tenderness and patience. Support them in being earthly examples of love. Shield those who look to them for guidance as we look to you to always be with us. Give them humility and a sense of humor in parenting. And know our gratitude for all they have taught us, all they have given us, and all they have hoped for us in the future. We pray this in the name of one who called you Father, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.